Thank you for viewing a new tutorial. Now this one is in collaborations with my good friend Pat over at Pat's Home Crafts. You'll find her link down in the description box. Well on this one what we decided to do a little bit different is she's going to do her take on that mason jar sign from Dollar Tree and I'm going to do my take on it and just show you guys how both people in two different states can be thinking so much alike and have a different take but buy the same things. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. It's totally free, costs nothing. Hit the subscribe word, the bell comes up, hit the bell, and you'll receive notification each and every new video that I put up first before anybody else knows about it. Let's get to it. I'm gonna show you what I did, and let me know what you guys think. Give me a thumbs up, leave your comments in the, down in the comment box. So without further ado, let's get to it, okay? We're going to DIY these Dollar Tree signage. And we are going to make these all completely fall themed and very, very convertible. You'll need some foam core board, just a piece, large enough to go atop of the Hello Fall with the truck mason jar sign. And you will need two paper clips. So the first sign we're going to work on is Hello Fall Dollar Tree mason jar sign. The next one we'll do, Hello Summer. Now I'm going to be reusing the hanger on this one. Deliberately remove the hanger from off of it because we're going to be putting it back on it. And uh, then that way we can still hang this sign up unless you convert yours to where it sits about. The reason why we want this foam core board, I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to put it in that area. I want to trim this off. And that way it fits the top of my mason jar. I'm just going to take that off real quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a floral arrangement that I can slide on and off of this foam core board. And the reason why I want the hanger is we're going to reverse it. Rather than worrying about whether it's coming through or not so that it still holds, I'm going to actually put the hanger on there this way in backwards so that it's hanging from this direction and it'll still hang up and so this piece i am making it to where i can take the paper clips glue that to it and hook it over the back edge so that it is not interfered with and it's not going to pose a problem and i can easily slip this on and off so i'm just going to work with my paper clip here and get it straightened out on one side and I'm going to do this one the very same way. And what I want to do is I want to turn that to where when I attach this to the foam core board, it will clip over the back of it. And you want it long. You want to leave this long part to go over the back because of the weight of what's going to be on here. And I want that to very easily mark where I need to glue that. So I'm going to mark this one right there. About a three inch space, just guesstimating. And that's just so I know where to buckle those. Now I'm going to use some of my painter's tape as I do with my other signs and making sure everything just stays buckled on there. And the great thing about using the painter's tape is when you get your hot glue on there, it will all hold together. Just, and the tape will make sure it don't ever come off. Okay. So while my glue is drying or cooling off on my styrofoam, I'm going to bring my hanger in to the front from the back side. And then that way I won't have to struggle with that. It'll already be on there. And now that's situated. I'll just get it out of the way. Now while I'm working on this, guys, I'm going to take and just slide it down over this pot. Stick it inside that pot so that I can glue and decorate with the florals 
and that just kind of holds it in place and it doesn't bend my paper clips before I'm ready. Now the glitter here, because I'm planning on going over these letters, I take my putty knife and I scrape that off. I'll do that off camera because it, it gets noisy. Now I'm going to put some of my burlap tape on this foam core board just in case something or the wind or something might expose what's in the background. And I just want to make sure that I've got that foam core board covered up. I'm going to take a second. And it's just a, a background cover. That's all that is. But you can use the burlap ribbon on this. It works just as good, if not better. I trimmed off the excess burlap and started attaching my oak leaves and my maple leaves. Additionally, I selected the burgundy mums along with the burlap sunflowers. And I placed two on one side, one mum, and then one mum on the other side. I will later add more to it, you will see. But now it was time to spruce up those pumpkins and get them ready for this arrangement. They had these pumpkins this year, and I really like the color of these. And I want to work these into my little attachment here. So I think I might just put that one right there. Now another trick I do guys when I'm trying to make a flower go where I want it to, sometimes just a spot of hot glue can help with that. And just I just put a little glue right there and pull them together. That way that flower stays open for me where I want it, just like I want it. This is looking pretty good so far. We gotta put our other pumpkin on there. Now I'm wanting to trim off this back part. And one thing that I've found that really works good is these putty knives. You can find these at Dollar Tree. And so if you just kind of work your way in there, this is the best cutter for the styrofoam. And you don't have a real hard time. You can just work your way right through there. So you want to keep it straight, don't do like I did. There you go, you got your half pumpkin ready to go on there. Do the same thing with this one. Probably don't have much trouble locating the putty knife. And take that right off. It's easier than trying to cut through it with a knife knife. How's that looking, you guys? Liking that? Now, I also have this heather, and I think it has just enough yellow and green hue in there that's going to help all, bring all this together. It just needs something more. Now, I have some of this raffi left over from the tiki skirt. And I'm just piling it together, and I am going to actually glue that underneath that pumpkin there. So I folded the raffi in half, and I glued it to the bottom of that little pumpkin. But then I took some jute twine, wound it around my hand, frayed it out really good, and then I glued it under the other pumpkin. I left this on the video for those little extra things you can do, and it just kind of made it look like a haystack. All right, gang, I've got our jute twine all frayed out and glued up under the pumpkin. So it looks more like it's a hay bale or, you know, sitting on a bale of something, just like it would be tied up. We have our little vines, our little curly cues coming off of our pumpkins. So let's try it out. Here's our sign. We have our hanger on there already. We have our paper clips coming out the rear. And I haven't bent just right. So I'm running it through there. And it will sit on there freely. But to make sure it stays, we're just going to go ahead and bend those paper clips down on the back. I know that that's going to sit there. So to make sure 
that this stays good and snug. I'm actually going to bend my paper clips just a little bit more taut. And now I can just slide it on. Voila. She is slid on there and she's not going anywhere. And they'll stay put. That way, if you decide later on you just want your sign like it is, you can. So we've got that situated. Now we need to fix our hello fall. So I'm going to slide this off, move it over here, and I'm going to bring into the picture my paint marker. So I'm basically just going to go over these letters with my paint marker. Okay guys, I put our topper back on there. And I think that's all I'm going to do to the lettering. Just to give it that little bit of glitters coming through what I left on there from the lettering. And I just shadowed it a little bit with the black to make it a little more three-dimensional. And as you can see, the font is actually what I call the Ford font. I'll hang it up and get you some better shots. Let's move on to our next mason jar Dollar Tree signage for the fall. I think she looks pretty good. Now to do this sign, I'm using the Hello Summer. I have a bamboo that come from off of one of the chimes from Dollar Tree. This is the Dollar Tree signage for Hello Summer mason jar. And then I have my putty knife. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide this lemon from off of my sign because we're gonna use it. And if you just use that putty knife and let it be your leverage. And pop that off. I'm going to do the same thing up here to these leaves. It just pop right off. I'm going to take the hanger off. And then I'm going to use the putty knife to scrape this glitter off. Now I'm going to attempt to make a muleted cider color. This is the School Bus Yellow Folk Art Paint. The muleted cider is yellow uh, and it has maybe just a tweak of amber depending on how long you brew your or crock pot it or cook it uh, when you make your apple cider without turning it orange. I have some Napa Red here. I'll just mix these two and see what it gives us. And there's an outline here from the previous that was on here. So I'm going to do my best to paint within the line. Okay, it looks like I've achieved the color I was going for. That looks just like muled cider. So I'm going to set this aside and let it dry and then we can do some shading. In the meantime, we have this bamboo. Now you can use any kind of sticks. If you actually have cinnamon, I could not locate my cinnamon, guys. So that's what I was going to actually glue on it was a piece of cinnamon bark. But I do have this bamboo, and I'm going to paint it the color of cinnamon. Now another thing you might have on hand is if you use the foam sponge brushes from Dollar Tree, you could use this wooden dowel. And if you needed to, and you have more than one, if you wanted it longer, you could, of course, glue two together. But I just happened to have this that fell off of my little wind chime. And I thought, wow, I could use that. That'd be perfect for cinnamon. So we got to achieve that color. Now, sometimes we can, once again, I'm going to default to this Napa Red. As I've told y'all in the past, this Napa Red... It is my go-to. This is Americana. It is one of the most used colors in my arsenal of paints. I love it. It is so great. It's by Deco Art, and this is my go-to. It is great for Christmas, 
and it just seems to have that right amount of hue whenever you're doing something like this um, painting and trying to get your colors adjusted now I have some Waverly truffle here and I'm going to attempt to use just a dab of it I'm going to stick my brush in it one time I'm going to pick up that map of red and I'm going to mix these together my attempt here is to make cinnamon color uh, you can actually purchase cinnamon colored paint but since I'm sitting right here and this is running tape I want to try and get this painted up real quick so that I can put it on the sign and just try and show you guys what I do when you need to make a color you just got to think about what it is that you relevantly see the most of whenever you look at that color what pops out at you and cinnamon has an orange red color and that's the color of cinnamon is an orange red color and I have this that we pulled off of the sign originally I can use it if I want to cut it in half and I probably want to do away with the glitter so let me scrape the glitter off okay I'm going to take my razor case cutter and I got it from Dollar Tree and I'm basically going to cut this in half and I'm just trying to find a good center here and watch yourself make sure that your blade is locked And I'm just scoring this. Take my sand and sponge and just smooth off the edge of this orange peel. I think I want to go with this side. I'm going to use my orange paint markers. You guys know that I always keep a link in the description box underneath my videos to the affiliate over at Amazon where you can purchase these markers. And that makes it real easy for those who do everything online. Sometimes you can find these at Walmart or Target. But here lately, because so many people are doing the DIY you might have better luck using the affiliate link to order these and I do make sure that try to get you guys the best price possible they last forever they will just keep giving and giving and giving and all the DIYs I have done with these paint markers I've only ran out of one so far that I've actually used up all the paint on it or in it, the paint in it. I'm just following that yellow line. This was a summer, so it had a lemon. And I'm just converting our lemon into an orange. Okay, so I gotta bring my mug back up. So I've got my silver paint marker. And I'll just put my paint on there enough that I can still make out the lines that were there before on my mug that just makes it easier for me to highlight it and if you are a beginner painter or doing beginner painting this would be an excellent way for you to train yourself and to get used to kind of doing your shading and bringing light back in or rather taking light out and so it's like a little bit of shading there I don't know if you guys can see it on camera but if you'll watch what I'm doing you can see that I'm watching for those lines I'm seeing those lines in there and I'm looking for them and another thing too is if it if it makes sense you know it has to make sense if um, if it doesn't make sense that the line should be there, then don't put it back there. 
uh, depending on what piece you're doing or what it is that you're working on, you know, if it makes sense to you, you know, so just kind of look at your lines and, and say, well, you know, does that look right? Does that look like the way a jar would be? The rings on it. So if, it is, if it's looking like the rings of the jar, then definitely put them there. And so a lot of this will be covered up by the pieces we glue on it. So I don't sweat it. I just go with it. And I don't try to guess at, you know, overwork it. Just don't overthink it. Just go with it and see what it comes out to be because you already know that you're going to be adding pieces on here or I know that I'm already going to be adding pieces on here and they don't have to be exact I mean it don't have to be just like it was before that's the great thing about it is you can really customize it and make it your own because they'll have your own personal take on it, you know, your touch to what you are seeing, what your eye picks up on, what it is, how you perceive something. And you just go with that. Okay, so that looks like enough ringlets on the jar itself. So let's go to the shoulders here. Let's try to bring light or take the light out, so to speak. It's almost like a hit and miss when you're doing this. Just try to make it look more like the jar does when it's sitting full. Turns the corner here. That angle has a little more light in it. And like this edge. Then I know that this handle is going to have a top reflection, so to speak. And there was a line there before, so I can just follow that. It'll give me that. And then right here was more depth more shadowing, so to speak. Okay, so I have my cinnamon stick that's going to be about here. I've got my orange slice that's going to be about here. I know that usually you put a star of anise in there then an apple slice and an apple has a shape like a heart so I'll probably sketch out an apple shape so I began sketching out the apple and I first left the orange peel there then once I got my apple developed so to speak using a white eraser will remove all residue of any lead or graphite from your pencil and then I was ready to take my red paint marker and trace it out. Now the inside of our apple is going to be more of a cream color. So I have the flat brush. I actually have toasted marshmallow. This is multi-surface and this is apple barrel. And this makes a perfect cream color that we will need for our apple. Now I got this brown paint marker guys and these are also down in the description box. These are very very fine writing paint markers and I have just been super impressed with these markers. My daughter had bought these originally and educated me on these because she does some very small type of work and 
painting with these small markers and they have just been so impressive and as you can see i mean boy you can just really really get in there and just do some really fine painting okay now the apple is it's really like there and so i want to move it back a little bit so i'm going to actually trim it out on the inner part next to the cream with this brown and that should help set that red backwards a bit so it's not quite dry and don't worry about the smear guys it trust me it will be just fine if you're really really concerned about it because that is an acrylic paint if you'll take your paintbrush while it's damp and just a little bit of water and pull away from where you're wanting to get it away from just kind of clean it up with the paintbrush a damp paintbrush take a towel we're just going to sop it up and that is the great thing about these acrylic markers these are the water base not the oil base so remember what i told you guys before if you're going to seal this do it with mod podge so that it does not disturb the paint and that way you're not having that problem happening so we want to make sure that we don't have any accidents that looks like a spot of paint there so we can fix that see how i touched that with a brush took it right off just make sure you have your towel and just press soak it up like you're cleaning carpet stains the orange paint marker and i lessened the white so it looks more like an orange and then i deepened it with the truffle now where i watered it down a little bit more but i don't want to disturb the actual color so i'm going to pick up some of the paint that's actually there and make this a little bit deeper rub that on there and see what stays behind okay that's deepening that up a little bit for me Okay, so let's take our truffle that we've got watered down. Get your brush real good with it. You know, get it in there pretty good. And then we're going to dry brush. So you can use your paper like I do, and I really let it soak up the most of it. Move this stuff out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of go over the very edge over there the very edge so this step is very important the shading using the watered down truffle like a dry brushing but maybe just a little bit deeper depth and i left it on the video because i wanted you to be able to duplicate the exact mug that i did and as you see, I took the brown paint marker and I drew out the Anna star. I took the black and dotted it to make the seeds more apparent. And then I started gluing all of my pieces into place just as they were laid out. And here we go. Okay, guys, we got our things glued on there. We have our cinnamon glued on there, our orange slice, our apples painted on, and we have our Anna star. And to fix this apple stem, there we go, it looks more like it. I hope you guys are liking this so far. Now we need to put molded, you know, hot molded cider, or molded cider, hot molded okay, cider. Okay guys, I am attempting to put mold cider on my sign with my paint marker. And I may have to go over this two or three times because my paint marker is about give out. 
So I think I'm going to actually run through another one. And these have lasted so well. They've done such a great job. I've had happy returns with the money I spent on these paint markers. They are worth every dime. So we have our sign finished, guys, and we have our hanger placed on it and everything glued on it. But the good Lord says, let there be ribbon, and I was in line. So look at this. I want to make a button ribbon just to go up here. And like I said, this will be excellent at a coffee bar or somewhere where you may be letting people know that there's hot cider available or malted cider. So I'm just going to make a small button bow to go up there. And I think what we'll do on this is we'll cut, I don't know, maybe let's do a little four inch or so section here. So taking four pieces of ribbon along with a piece of scrap burlap and stack them together, turn the burlap diagonal and then cut the dovetails on there if you like. A piece of jute twine tied extremely tight with a knot Leave the tails on the G-twine and then just adjust your ribbon bow however you want and tie it to your hanger. Old timey rustic appeal that I like so much. That primitive look to it. So, what do you guys think? You like her so far? I certainly hope so. I'm going to hang her up Stay tuned for the B-roll. We'll be showing her off and looking at both our signs. I always tell you, have a wonderfully dandily crafty day. But I want you to do more than that. I want you to have a dandy day just like Pat and I. So until the next DIY, this is Elizabeth. Over and out. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.